good afternoon everyone this is the 10th video of our lecture series where we are doing problems from thermal physics which have appeared in competitive exams like jam and jest so in the earlier video we learned about different thermodynamic processes we learned about different thermodynamic processes for example isobaric isobolic isothermal and adiabatic processes and what is the change in inter internal energy work done and heat exchanged in those processes so in today's video we'll do some problems from those topics okay so this is the first problem of today's video and this is just an example problem but i chose this example because this will greatly demonstrate the concepts that we discussed in the earlier video so let us start the problem states that a sample of an ideal gas is taken through a cyclic process abca as shown in the figure i have not shown the figure here so let me draw that Okay, so this is a cyclic process and this is a PV diagram. So it is said that it absorbed 50 joule of heat during part AB, which is this one, no heat during BC, which is this one, and rejected 70 joule of heat during CA, and 40 joule of work is done during part BC. So, we have to calculate two things. First is the internal energy of the gas at B and C if it is 1500 joule at A and also we have to calculate the work done during the CA part. So, let us start. So, first we will look at AB. So, from the diagram it is clear that during AB part the volume is not changing. So, this is an isobaric process and for this case it is given that delta q is 50 joule given in the question and what will be delta u and delta w we know for isobaric process the work done is pdv and since volume since volume is not changing then dv is zero so the work done will be zero so work done is zero and delta u then we can obtain from the first law of thermodynamics as dq minus dw then this will also be 50 joule okay so now let us look at the part ca in this case we can see that the pressure is not changing so this is an isoporic process again we need to calculate dq du and dw we 
okay so it is given in the problem that during the part ca the system has rejected 70 joule so dq is minus 70 joule and delta u and delta w is unknown for the time being and we will find them by solving the first part of the problem so now let us look at the bc part which does not resemble any um, which does not re resemble any typical pv curve but again for this also we need to calculate dq du and dw so it is given in the question that 40 joule of work is done on the gas during part bc so we will obtain that delta w is 40 joule and it is also given that no heat during bc is transferred so delta q is 0 and again this is information and this information both are given in the problem so is this one So, we can again easily calculate what delta u will be. Okay, I made a small mistake here. Since the work is done on the gas, this will be 40. So, delta u will be delta q minus delta w, which will be 40 joule. So let us go to the first part of the problem. The first part asks find the internal energy of the gas at B and C if it is 1500 joule at A. So let us start. At A, let us denote it by UA, at B, at UB, and at C by UC. And from the question, it is given that UA is 1500 Joule. Now, we know from the AB process that in that case delta u is 50 joule so we have delta u during the ab process is delta b minus sorry this is ub minus u a this is 50 joule we can write this in this manner because the system goes from a to b so this will give us ub equal to ua plus delta u ab so ub will be 1550 joule so let us write the answer separately also put a box around it Similarly, we need to calculate UC. 
it is given that during the part BC, delta U is 40 joule. And since the process is evolving like from B to C, like shown in this diagram, we can write this as UC equal to delta U BC plus UB. This is because delta U BC is equal to UC minus UB. So, we will obtain UC equal to 1550 plus 40 joule. So, 1590 joule. Again, let me write the answer here. UC is 1590 joule and let me put a box around it also. So, this is the first part of the problem. So, let me write the answers here. UA was 1500, UB was 5050, and UC is 5090 June. So, the first part is done. Now, we will move to the second part. Here, we have to calculate the work done by the gas during the part CA. So, the second part asks to calculate the work done during C. So, you remember that when you are writing the delta Q, delta U and delta W in all the parts, we did not write delta U and delta W for the CA process which is an isocardic process that is pressure is constant. So, how to obtain these terms? So, let us start by looking at the delta U term. So, what will be delta U CA? We can obtain this from this diagram here. This is the C and this is the A part and so delta U C A will be U A minus U C. So, we can use that equation to write delta U C A equal to U A minus U C and here we have obtained the values that U A is 1500 and U C is 1590. So, this will be fifteen hundred minus 1590 Joule which means minus 90 Joule. So, then what will be the work done in the CA part? We know that this can be given from the first law of thermodynamics we states that delta Q C A is equal to delta U C A plus delta W C A. So, delta W C A will be delta Q C A minus delta U C A. Now, from the problem, we know that delta Q CA is minus 70 and delta U we obtained 
as minus 90 joule so you can put the values here minus 70 minus of minus 90 joule and this will give us 20 joule again put, put a box around the answer so this is the answer of part b and these are the answers of part a and here delta w is 20 joule if we look at the diagram we will also find that these values are consistent because during the CA process the pressure is constant and volume is increasing so during the CA process it is increasing so dv is greater than 0 so delta w integration of pdv has to be greater than 0 and we also obtain that it is 20 joule which is greater than 0 okay so we have also completed the second part where the answer is delta wca is 20 joule okay so this is the first problem of today's video okay so before moving on to the second problem i just realized that i have made a small mistake here in the first problem so i have written that the ab was an isobaric process but that is not true because for ab volume is constant so this will be an iso process and also for the CA part there the pressure is not changing so this will be an isobaric process not isoporic okay the other things that we calculated in the problem they were actually considering ab as isoporic and ca as isobaric so the results are correct i have just uh, written these things wrongly so now let us move to the second problem okay so welcome to the second problem of this video this is again an example problem but this will enable us to do some good exercise so i have chosen this problem the problem states that a sample of an ideal gas has pressure p0 volume v0 and temperature p0 it is isothermally expanded to twice its original volume then it is compressed at constant pressure to have the original volume v0 finally this is heated at constant volume to get the original temperature and the question asks us to show the process in vt diagram and calculate the heat absorbed in the process so in the earlier examples we obtained pv diagrams of isobaric isochoric isothermal and adiabatic processes so this is a pv diagram but here in this question we have to draw the vt diagram so this is something new and this will also enable us to understand how to draw this draw these diagrams so that's why this is one of the reason i chose this problem so let us begin let us start from here and say that it is the point a a or initial state 
has pressure P0, volume V0 and temperature T0. So this will be V0 and T0 in the VT diagram or let me write it. Correctly, it will be T0 and V0 because T is the independent variable in the diagram like I have drawn here. So, in the first part, we have isothermal expansion. So, in a isothermal expansion, we have T constant and the final volume is given to be twice the initial volume which is 2V0, Tf then will be nothing but T0 and Pf we can easily calculate for an ideal gas from the equation Pv equal to nRT where T is constant we will obtain Pf to be P0 over 2. Now in this diagram we only need the T and V values. So T is constant. So this will give us a vertical line up to the point to V0. this was V0. So, this will be a vertical line. Let us denote this point as B where temperature is T0 and volume is 2 V0. Okay. So, the first part is done. The second part is compressed at an constant pressure. So, constant pressure means this is an isobaric process. So, again from the ideal gas law, we have PV equal to nRT and as P is constant, we know that V is proportional to T. So, for compression, this denotes that V is decreasing and T is also then will be decreasing according to this equation. So, in this diagram this will be just a straight line from V. Let us denote this point at C. So, this will be a new temperature Tf and the volume V0. So, what will be the temperature Tf? We can again obtain from this equation and this will be let us write it as V equal to Kt. So, from this line we know that V0 2 V0 is equal to K T0 and V0 will be K Tf. So, we will obtain 2 equal to T0 over Tf. So, Tf is T0 by 2. Tf equal to T0 by 2 means that the temperature has decreased. So, Tf will be T0 by 2. 
and this is the T0 point. So, the path from B to C will be a straight line according to this equation. And so, what will be the third case? The third case is heated at constant volume to get the original temperature. So, this is heated at constant volume. So, here again V is constant which means dv equal to 0 and this is an iso coric process. So, for iso coric process we know that at point B here, I am sorry at point C here at point C volume was V0 and temperature was Tf which is equal to T0 by 2 and we have heated it in such a manner that the volume is constant. So, when it reaches A, the volume will still be V0 like we have defined in the first case also V is V0 and T A will be T0. So, the last line will be an horizontal line. Why horizontal? Because here the volume is constant and T is increasing. So, this is our final VT diagram. So, let me draw it in a large shape clearly here. So, Okay, so this is V and this is T and this is the initial state A which is given by T0, V0 from here and isothermal expansion will be just a vertical line to state B which is given by T0 to V0 then and isobaric compression will be a straight line to state C which is defined as T0 by 2, V0 and the final expansion at constant volume will again be a horizontal line and isochoric process and it will go to state A which is again given by T0, V0. So, this point is T0, 
this point is 0 by 2, this point is 0, and this point is 2 V0. So, this is our whole VT diagram. And if it is asked in the question to draw any kind of other diagrams, we can approach it in a similar manner. So, in that way, we will obtain the correct diagram. So, the first part is done and the second part is calculate the heat absorbed in the process. So, let us do that. So, this was part A and in part B, we have to calculate the heat absorbed during the whole cyclic process. So, we know that for a cyclic process delta u will be 0. Why? Because it is again coming to the initial state and since du is an state function, so delta u here will be nothing but u a minus u a which is 0. So, from the first thermodynamic equation we can say that dq is equal to dw sorry delta q is equal to delta w plus delta u where delta u is 0 which implies delta q is equal to delta w so we have to calculate the work done because the work done is itself equal to the heat absorbed. So there is two way to calculate the work done in this kind of problems. First is to calculate work done in each phase or to calculate work done by finding the area under the curve of a PV diagram. So, this method we cannot apply here yet because we have not obtained the PV diagram. You can do that, uh, consider this as an informal problem. You can find the PV diagram from this VT diagram and there you can calculate the area by calculating the area of whatever the cyclic process will be represented by and that's, that will give you the work done. So, if for this problem, we will calculate the work done in each phase and add them up. So, what was the first phase? That was an isothermal expansion. So, we will not derive this form. So, we will just use the expression that we obtained in the earlier video, video number 9. So, this lecture 9 formulas will be directly used here. So, for an isothermal expansion, we have from dw equal to pdv we will obtain delta w the work done is 
एन आर टी एल एन फी एफ ओवर फी आई सो फॉर आवर केस दिस विल बी एन आर फी जीरो एल एन टू फी जीरो बाई फी जीरो वेर द फी जीरो टाइम्स विल कैंसल आउट एंड डेल्टा डब्ल्यू विल बी एन आर टी जीरो एल एन टू again for the second case oh here i forgot to mention that n is the number of moles and r is the gas constant these terms are not given in the problem so we'll leave in their standard form okay so the second part was and compression at constant pressure so this was compression at constant pressure i saw what it process we again know that for an isobaric process Pw from the integration of PDV is given by P zero, which is the initial or constant pressure, times Vf minus Vi. So here delta W will be nothing but P zero. Final volume is here V zero and initial was two V zero because this is a compression, so this will be minus P zero V zero and what is P zero? We can obtain it from the ideal gas equation. P zero V zero is equal to N R T zero. No, it will be N R T zero by two because here. This is actually the point C. The temperature T F is T zero by two, so P zero will be N R T zero by two V zero. So if we put this in this equation, we will obtain delta W equal to minus N R T zero by So V zero times V zero, the V zeros will cancel out, and we'll obtain that the work done is N R T zero by two. And what is the third case? This is an isocolic. That means constant volume. heat increase or constant volume temperature increase such that the final temperature reaches from t0 by 2 to t0 so this is an isocolic process that means v is constant which is v0 in our case so we know tv is 0 so delta w pdv will be nothing but 0 so what will be the total work done the total work done will be nothing but delta w let us denote it as first process delta w1 this is delta w Two and this is delta W three. I missed a negative sign here, which is here. So delta W total will be delta W one plus delta W two plus delta W three. So this will be N R T zero. 
ln 2 minus nr t0 by 2 plus 0 which will be nr t0 ln 2 minus half. So, this is our final answer. The total work done in this cyclic process in a single cycle is nr t0 ln2 minus half. So, let me put a box around this answer. So, this is our answer. Okay. So, we have done the second problem also. Let me write the answer here also. Not t0 then 2 minus half okay so this is the second problem of today's lecture